<laughs> God bless your hearts. This is me, Reverend Watson from Kingdom of Deliverance. How you doing? Just wanted to put up this quick video while I, it was on my mind. Um, there's something that I've been seeing here, at least here in this town, in this hometown. I don't know where it is, what it's like, where you're at. But here in Peoria, we are, um, there's a lot of uh, suffering going on. Yeah, unnecessary, needless suffering. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of that going on right here in this town. And it's something that I knew uh, that was going on because uh, coming to the church during the week, um, find out there's a lot of people gathering on our porch. Yeah, gathering on our porch. And I wanted to know what the reason that was. Um, but after a while dealing with a lot of people uh, or talking to a lot of people, um, there's a serious problem with a lot of people suffering with addiction, suffering with being uh, without a roof over their head and hungry. You all kind of saw that uh, a previous video about uh, title, uh, What We Do. Um, yeah, where you saw that... Uh, I had to take, uh, we were taking food to those that were in need. Uh, that's one of the things we do here at uh, Kingdom of Deliverance. We deal with uh, homeless, uh, not homelessness, but dealing with the need of hunger um, because it's going on. It's, it's no joke. People are suffering. And what gets me is that folks look at people's condition, whether it be homelessness, whether it be drug addiction, whether it be uh, lack of food, lack of clothes, and want to put it on them and say that there is a problem um, and harden their hearts to what's going on. Ooh, mm, got to trim the got to trim the mustache um, and want to deal with uh, what that it's their fault. Oh, I just walked into some darkness. Um, the problem is, it's not, things happen to everybody. And things happen uh, that are on with a series of, as the show would say, a series of unfortunate events. Uh, sometimes it might be something that they have done. Sometimes it might be something uh, out of their control and has put them in that situation. Uh, the thing is, is that we are not to look at them and blame them for their situation. But if we're Christians, if we believe in Christ, we're supposed to help them up. Not, when I mean help them up, yeah, give them some fish, but teach them how to fish. Um, and right now, uh, got a couple of scriptures just running through my head. One of those scriptures is when we look at folks and think it's their problem, reminds me of uh, the time that Jesus and the disciples found a man blind from birth. And the disciples asked the question, Whose fault is it that he's blind? Is it the fault that the parents sinned or did he sin? And Jesus simply looked at him and asked, asked the question, none, that the glory of God might be what? Revealed. Uh, and then he proceeded to heal the man. Mm. So the reason why I went that, went that direction is because of why folks are standing or gathering around our front porch here at Kingdom of Deliverance Folks will say because we have an outlet, uh, a power outlet outside and folks are charging their batteries. Not necessarily the case. They're out there, yeah, they, if they got, you know, trying to keep up communication, hey, that's, that's one of the things. But the other thing is, is that they're looking for a safe place and the church should be that safe place. The other scripture that's running through my mind is because of how uh, is a little different than what the disciples asked Jesus with the blind man. But it's what Jesus did when he saw the ones that were sick and lame that came to him. Uh, and what it says in the scripture is that he's, Jesus saw them and he was moved with compassion. What we lack as people is compassion. Yeah, we, what it means is, is that we're not touched by their problem. Now, I know that some folks are going to be looking and saying, hey, you know, you can't always be touched by folks. Folks are trying to, 
to use you. Tro folks are trying to see what they can get out of you. Hey, that's the case. There's always going to be some type of hustler somewhere. But we're not as children of the Most High God supposed to be worried about that. Why? Because just as they Jesus came and folks came was on this earth and folks came to them to be healed, there were some folks in that crowd that simply did not just want to hear about Jesus preaching and hear him teach. There were some folks that were literally there trying to get and deal with their needs and get it in met. So they went around and played the role, but Jesus still healed them. Think about how many of the 5,000 men that were there when Jesus fed the 5,000 were only there to what? Eat. Mm. They didn't pay attention to the teaching. No. They, 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 didn't, they didn't come to, to see the Son of God. Some of them just came for some fish and some bread. You know, JJ's was closed. So they came for some fish and some bread. But did Jesus, knowing the thoughts, and since he's the word of God incarnate, he knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Did he not, did he say, don't give it to that person because they didn't come here to hear me? Don't give it to that person because their, their motivation ain't true? No, he gave to all the 5,000 men plus the women and children. Moved with compassion. And some of those folks that he either healed, some of those folks that he either taught, some of those folks that he, that he performed miracles for, I bet you some of them were on that, third, that Thursday night in that night court lying on Jesus. And Jesus probably, since he was the word of God, knew. But he didn't stop him. The point that I'm trying to make is, is that if we say that we are supposed to be like Christ and we're in the family of God by the spirit of adoption, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father, and being heirs and joint heirs with Christ, and we say we want to be like him, we should have the same compassion as he does. Because some of us came to church for the wrong reason. Some of us got involved in some ministries for the wrong reason. But God did not ostracize us and didn't move with compassion when we were in need, when we were hurt. He moved. And the reason why he does that is first of all because he's God. Second, because he loves us. Third, he is full of grace and mercy. And fourth, he's planting the seed. Because you never know what it's going to take to make that person move toward Christ. So when you deal with folks that you see that are down on their luck, outdoors, in the street, hungry, be moved with compassion. Because you never know, you are planting the seed. Don't worry about what, if you give them, if you give them change, don't worry what they're going to do with that change. They're going to go get some night train and some Cisco and go down to see the weed man. Don't worry about that. That's not your point. I believe that these folks that come to this door, God is trying to show KODBC something. And for us at KODBC to show everybody else something. Because in my experience, when God keeps bringing things or the same thing to you, even though you try to get rid of it and he keeps bringing it back, God is trying to show you and tell you, you got to do something about that. And that is to move with compassion. Help folks because you never know. Your actions will lead them. Not your words. Mm. Not just your words, not your preaching, not your testifying, not your witnessing, but your actions in the, in the power of the Holy Ghost through the love of Christ will bring them to the cross where they can come and get 
what they need from the sustainer and the provider for the entire world. Move with compassion, my brothers and sisters. Don't overlook nobody because God put them in your way to show the love of Christ. Hey, that's it, my brothers and sisters. Now, I, I, since I said that little shameless plug, we still are doing our food here at uh, uh, KODBC, Emergency Food Pantry. If you want to help us out, do that. Um, you can do that by giving a donation. You can do that by helping. You can do that by even giving some canned goods. Hey, because last month we did... Uh, six folk, six families that needed emergency food, and that's going to get even tighter as the summer uh, turns into fall and fall turns into winter. So we definitely going to do that. I need to stay in frame. I'm sorry. Um, also, if you want to come uh, visit us here at KODBC, you can do so. We have service every Sunday uh, at uh, 1130. Uh, 11, uh, 11 o'clock uh, and 11.30, come through. Uh, we are located at 105 East Arcadia here in Peoria, Illinois, in the East Bluff. You know, if you're going to McDonald's, we're right across the street from, basically right across the street from the McDonald's uh, on Arcadia and Knoxville. So come and, come and check us out. Uh, also, if you like what's going on, hopefully you're liking the Bible study that we're doing on how to study the Bible. There will be another video up soon. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can check it out and you can get notified. If you subscribe to this channel, like the video. And liking the video does not necessarily uh, help me personally. It actually helps the church and the message of this church go forward and spread out to more people. So like and subscribe to the channel if you uh, and click the notification button so that you will be notified anytime uh, we post another video. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, hey, y'all be blessed and may God bless your heart.